Hi everyone, I'm Mike Trosel. Our year-long celebration of 125 years of golf in America concludes with New York, the Empire State. And our series ends where it all began, at least for the USGA. We were founded on December 22nd, 1894 at the Calumet Club in New York City. We're pleased today to be joined by Dottie Pepper, a 17-time winner on the LPGA Tour and golf commentator who was born in Saratoga Springs. Dottie, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Mike. Thanks to be uh, included in this big project. We're thrilled to have you. Now, Dottie, your father was a great athlete. He's a baseball player. Now, how did that influence your career decision on what path you decided to go down? I don't know that it really impacted the path as it did the timing. And learned, I, I guess I was very gifted with the, the lessons that my dad learned um, being signed right out of high school to play with the Detroit Tigers, making it into the matrix, but not nearly as deep and as far as he would have liked to. And when his oldest daughter decided she wanted to run rather than walk first, as it came to golf, she, he kind of put the kibosh on it. And it just gave me a little slower, more reasonable start and said, you know, you're not going to go play in the state championship early this year. And I want you to be ready to play and be ready to handle things that might not go perfectly. So a year later, I was much more able to handle that and uh, and uh, ended up winning that junior championship and the state championship for women as well. Winning those state events in New York. Yeah. When did you start to realize that you, know, you may have a future in this game? This is something you may want to do for a career. I think my parents had said that I came home as a 13-year-old and said I was going to do this for a living. And that's when they knew they really had trouble on their hands. <laughs> and we, you know, we need to kind of figure out how to make this a positive experience, knowing that it was a, a type A plus expectation sort of child they had on their hands. And that's where I think that slowing me down a little bit really did help. Uh, but it also, uh, the lessons that my dad learned without having gone to college, had a, had a degree that he could lean on if things didn't go perfectly, was maybe the biggest gift of all. Because I, I did end up having a useful degree from Furman and had that four-year experience turned professional. And then when I, when I didn't have any playing opportunities anymore, I had other other ways I could still stay in the game and, and stay very much a part of it. Now, you grew up in Saratoga Springs. What are a few courses up in that area that makes that region of New York really special in terms of golf? Well, there were right in Saratoga Springs proper, the little town of, of Wilton right next door it was McGregor Link. And that was uh, the premier golf course in this area at the time. And with ties to National Golf Links. Donald Ross was also in this area, but I, I was really fortunate to have spent most of my time playing at McGregor. It was this very sandy soil with uneven lies, uh, a lot of fescue, big greens, small greens, a lot of elevation changes, and that was a great advantage to me, and it was only a small bicycle ride away, so I could go chip and pup even before school. And they were very, very junior-friendly, women-friendly, and it, it was just the greatest gift of just being able to live around the corner from a place like that. But we also had others. Uh, the Sagamore, Glens Falls Country Club was close. If you go just over into the border into Vermont, there's a couple of other gems around Manchester. But we were very, very fortunate to have the Saratoga Golf Club also here. And my my teacher was the golf club, golf, golf professional at, at one point at all of them around here. It's very cool. Now, given the short season, you weren't riding your bicycle to the courses throughout the year. There's a fair bit of snow up there. Now, what did you do to stay sharp in the winter months, or did you just take a break from the game during the winter uh, and kind of use that as a way uh, to refresh a little bit? Well, I have a ski background more than a golf background, and my family still owns the ski shop that's in town, so we skied all winter long. And I played golf five years before I ever, or I played, I skied five years before I ever picked up a golf club. So that was that was what took up winter. And I also had my dad build a little net down in the basement so I could hit pitch shots, and I knew exactly what the carpet stimped at in the kitchen. And that's what we did all winter long. That's wonderful. Now, since retiring from competitive golf, you've had a very successful career as an on-course commentator. How was that transition, and what perspective have you gained from now being a broadcaster? Big picture, you don't own your own schedule. You can't pick your own tournaments. You're assigned with what you what you're going to work for for the year. But I, I think overall, the where you start to look at a golf course being pinched in where bunkers come in, the the trajectories that golf balls fly at, 
has definitely changed over the 15 years that I've I've been in broadcasting, and I don't even bother to start walking a golf course into 285, maybe 300 now, because it, it has changed so much on the on the PGA Tour, and it's starting to change. You're starting to see some pretty crazy numbers on the LPGA as well. But I think the ball doesn't move as much side to side, and, and I think it launches, if you want it to, much quicker. All right, Dottie Pepper, thank you so much for your insights on golf in New York. And that concludes our series on celebrating 125 years of golf in America.